Hello, it's Jim Raid here with uh, another video. This one's about my malt be layout. That's malt be in Lincolnshire rather than the one in Yorkshire. Uh, I found the name. Uh, it was adjacent to uh, Mockton, the name of my previous layout, because I wanted um, the M in it. Uh, and Moxley as well, the first one that I made. Uh, the loco here is um, an Armstrong Whitworth 040 diesel uh, that was used on the um, North Sunderland Railway, a little four and a half mile long one uh, up the northeast. Uh, on the on that railway it was called the Lady Armstrong after Sir W. G. Uh, and his wife no doubt. Um, you can see the fiddle yard now and um, what I'm going to do is to remove that cattle wagon and put it on the other side of the layout um, which will take a little bit of time so I'm just going to come off the fiddle yard and uh, stop this so I can explain about how the traverser works in my usual fashion it's a wobbly one and uh, there are a pair of screws which when up against their stops take out the wobble and ditto there uh, I can move the, the traverser up and down a bit if it does get misaligned and uh, okay I'll carry on um, <coughs> pardon me sorry so I'm losing the, uh, the plot just got to uncoup all those two and put them on here the, the loco I, I, I made in 19 around about 1982, a brass chassis. By this time I'd bought um, a hand operated pedestal drill so the holes were a little bit more accurate and it does have a little bit of compensation as well uh, but um, only guessed uh, and the controller takes out the imperfections well the feedback in the controller does otherwise it limps but it runs quite nicely and uh, I hadn't used it for ooh, 10 years or more got it out of its little box and uh, away it went the motor is um, a Mishima 18 33 and I forgot to say that the um, although you will have seen that <laughs> that the whoops the um, run round is um, this small traverser here which uh, sort of also doubles as a put a wagon in there as well Uh, the the signal point that's here is controlled by a slide switch and uh, into the little square knob that's on it I've drilled a hole and some wire in the tube which changes it and also uh, changes the front polarity as well. Because of the uh, track plan, I can get a 10 or 11, maybe 12 wagons on here, which does complicate matters quite a lot. 
that makes the uh, shunting, if you happen to like it, very entertaining. It's nice to be able to do all the control from one position. I'm actually sitting on an upturned rubbish bin with a bit of um, plastic rubbish bin that is with a bit of wood attached to it and a cushion on it. It was uh, my wife's idea and it works very well indeed because uh, uh, there's a handle on it as well so I can put odds and ends in it to take into an exhibition. So it be, in that case it becomes a, a container. Oops. I'll explain about the uh, controller as well. Uh, this is the uh, Brian Tilbury controller from 1974 and it's a three transistor controller. Um, two transistors for 25pH and one output transistor which will take 15 amps for £2.50. So you can build one very cheaply. <coughs> Pardon me. I will um, give a little demo and explain what happens with a short circuit with the controller. I've got a, a circuit board here actually that uh, I use to illustrate my PDF on controllers. Um, that's it there and you can see a red LED at this end and a green LED at the other. The red LED comes on when I switch the power on. The green one is across the output and pulses with the output. You can actually see the pulses working. You can see the rather large transistor attached to the end of it that has a heat sink on it. I only use a half amp transformer on this. Okay, a little, a little short circuit. Um, so I'll get the loco moving and short it out with my um, shunting pole. <clears throat> now what will happen while I'm doing this is that the green light has gone out. That's an indication to anyone using the controller that there actually is a short circuit somewhere. And nothing is going through the motor because the uh, power can't get to it because it's travelling straight across here. Um, there is a situation, but I'll, I'll come to that in a minute, sorry. What, what's happening now is that the power is going through the output transistor and I've got my hand on it underneath the uh, board here and it is beginning to get warm. As I said it's a half amp uh, transformer and the a transistor will take 15 amps but the half amp is continuous like uh, for those who may know about it a class A amplifier and continuous current going through something will cause it to heat up quite dramatically uh, and you lose a lot of power in a class A amplifier in a heat, in a heat sink if there was a larger heat sink, then it would last a lot longer. But say um, with a short circuit like that, it'll last for a couple of minutes and do no harm to the loco, to the controller, or indeed to the transformer. Uh, right now, where was I? Ah, yes, yes. Right, so I've got to pick up the um, that wagon there. This wagon is a slurry wagon that I found on the goods and not so goods site 
was uh, made in uh, 1910 and is painted to resemble its contents. Sadly, I've done that wrong. I should have put this on here. You'll see why in a minute. But uh, while I'm at it, uh, on the berry slip there, uh, I'll explain. I'll explain about that as well. The berry slip is this thing, which is just two points, ordinary points, superimposed in Photoshop, printed off onto an A4 sheet, and I make the point on, make the slip on top of it. Now, the, <coughs> the um, unlike the point, the berry slip is. Uh, moved by wire in the tube and at the end of the wire is just some fencing wire glued to the end. The power to the frogs is a U-shaped piece of twin and earth, the bare copper, up through the baseboard in contact with one um, blade, one point blade at a time and the other end of it Connected to, sorry, connected to the frog. Now, um, berry slips will cause um, a problem with shorting. Uh, so what I'm going to do is replicate that. There we are. Now, you can probably hear the motor humming. Now what happens what happens here is because the loco is, is doing the well has actuated the short some of the power is going through the motor but the controller being cleverly designed 99% of that power is again going through the output transistor which is getting hot again and uh, once the short is recognized and most modelers will be able to recognize this it's caused by the slip itself so as soon as I rectify it off it goes no harm done to the loco the controller or the transformer. The uh, light bulb and polyfuse ideas do not work with these controllers. But any experienced modeler will be able to recognise a short straight away and turn the controller off. And if it happens again, remove the loco and then find the short using a cheap analog multimeter. 
you can buy them for four or five pounds. Very useful they are too. I have uh, emailed uh, an electronics pal in um, Australia who makes pulse feedback controllers and uh, we agreed that the um, circuits in both this and the uh, Jonathan Scott one work in that manner and will excuse me that's my bad loco construction <laughs> a bit tangled up in itself Whoops. usually with stuff that has to be pushed into somewhere the locos are not allowed inside so that uh, a wagon is used in front to push them in which makes for a little bit more shunting and quite a bit of swapping round so you can do it Um, if any of you watching this would like to have the controller's PDF, if you would type my name and micro layouts into Google, you'll find my blogspot little site. And from there you can uh, get my email address and send me a nice message. <laughs> I say nice because I believe it or not I do still get the gimme 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 one line phone speak demands uh, which I now ignore and delete. So I'm ne <clears throat> nearly there with the, um, the first intention to uh, move that little cattle wagon. If anyone does come across a method of cutting the of cutting out the power to these sort of controllers and can demonstrate it, I'm not talking about anecdotes and hearsays, but an actual demonstration of the circuit or whatever it is working with these controllers. So many people say oh this works and that works and sadly they have not done the tests themselves. Anyway that's about it. Uh, well, I quite enjoyed that and uh, I hope you did too and thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.